Again, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, folks, Matthew 24, 14 has to be one of the most quoted, but also one of the most misapplied passages in Matthew 24. Even the most seasoned Bible teachers out there, decent Bible teachers out there, I have heard misapply Matthew 24, 14. What we need to remember is that Matthew chapter 24 deals with the tribulation period. There is no mention of the church in Matthew 24. There is no mention of the church age in Matthew 24, nor reference to Christians in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 deals with the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy. It has nothing to do in the church age in which we are in now. Matthew 24 deals with the tribulation period, and in the following chapter, chapter 25 deals with the kingdom to come. What is the gospel of the kingdom? Many try to put the gospel of the kingdom in the here and now. We have those, especially in a lot of charismatic circles, that are preaching, we are right now preaching the gospel of the kingdom. No, you're not. You are not preaching the gospel of the kingdom right now. You are putting that in its wrong perspective, in its wrong time period. So I want to endeavor this morning to put the gospel of the kingdom in its proper perspective and its proper time period. As a matter of fact, there are two gospels that many are not aware of today. Now, I know that you're bordering on the edge of your seat right there. I'm like, oh, you're saying like, well, where's Brother Rosado going with this? Hold on. Stay with me and keep your Bibles open. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14. Now, folks, listen. Many fail to understand that there are two distinct Gospels in Scripture. We find the Gospel of the kingdom. Jesus talks about that in Matthew 24, 14. And we have the gospel of Christ. Again, folks, two distinct gospels. We have the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of Christ. The gospel of the Lord Jesus. One gospel is being preached now. The other will be preached in the future. Again, hold on to your seats before you start throwing rocks at me. Okay? Now, the, uh, the gospel of the kingdom, at, in the, at first, in the first century, the gospel of the kingdom was preached by John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. What is he saying? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was the gospel of the kingdom preached by John the Baptist. It was also preached by Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verses 17 and 23. And then it was preached by the 12 apostles before, and let me reiterate, before Jesus' death, 
burial, and resurrection. This is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. And Mark chapter 1 and verse number 14. But here's what's interesting, folks. What's interesting is that the gospel of Christ out of 1 Corinthians 15 mentions the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And I want to read out of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verses 3 and 4. Moreover, brethren, actually 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. The Gospel of Christ in 1 Corinthians 15 mentions the death, the burial, and the bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus. However, the Gospel of the Kingdom that was preached by John, Jesus, the twelve disciples mentioned nothing concerning the death, burial, and the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Because Jesus, John the Baptist, and the twelve disciples were preaching that gospel of the kingdom before the crucifixion of the Lord. Before the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, the gospel of the kingdom was repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. But the gospel of the kingdom said nothing concerning Jesus' death and resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15 that we just read concerning the gospel of the Lord Jesus mentions nothing about the kingdom. The gospel of Christ mentions nothing about the kingdom. The gospel we're preaching now mentions nothing about the kingdom. However, the gospel of the preaching of the kingdom mentions nothing about the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So, folks, I find that to be interesting. Here's another thing that's interesting. Do you remember how Peter reacted strongly to Jesus' statement about his death and resurrection in Matthew 16, 22? It's like Peter manhandled the Lord. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. That's out of Matthew 16, 22. Why did Peter react so strongly to Jesus' statement about his, his death on the cross? Well, the Old Testament Jewish prophets foretold the Messiah's death and resurrection, those details could have been included in the gospel of the kingdom, but they were not, folks. If Peter had already been preaching Jesus' death and resurrection, he would not have reacted that way that he did by grabbing the Lord, saying, saying be it far from you, Lord. This ain't going to happen to you. Why? Because the gospel of the kingdom did not include the death and the bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus. By contrast, the gospel of Christ says nothing about the kingdom. Did Paul mention anything about the kingdom in 1 Corinthians 15? No. He just talks about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. 
That's what 1 Corinthians 15 focuses on. It focuses on Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. These two Gospels also differed in commission. The Gospel of the Kingdom had a restrictive commission. What do I mean by that? Jesus commanded his disciples to preach the gospel of the kingdom exclusively to Israel. Not to the Gentiles, not to the Samaritans, only to Israel. Now, how do I know that? Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 through 7, says this. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. Verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not the saved sheep of the house of Israel, but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Someone like John Hagee says Israel doesn't need to be evangelized today. They don't need missionaries going to Israel and preaching the gospel to them because they're automatically saved. That's what John Hagee teaches. He teaches dual covenant theology. That there's a salvation for the Jew outside of Jesus. And there's a salvation for the Gentile in Jesus. Bible doesn't teach that, folks. Jesus said, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7. As ye go, preach. Saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. No mention of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel of the kingdom doesn't include that. The gospel of Christ does. In 1 Corinthians 15, the gospel of the kingdom, folks, does not. I hope you're still with me now. The gospel of Christ has a universal commission. That universal commission is to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's the universal commission of the gospel of Christ. That is the task of the church today. Mark 16, 15. Jesus gives a universal commission. This is after his death, burial, and resurrection. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is the universal commission. That's after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Prior to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you had the gospel of the kingdom with a restrictive commission. To preach to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Again, the gospel of the kingdom involved a restrictive commission to preach exclusively to the Jews during Jesus' ministry in the first century. The gospel of Christ has a universal commission to go ye into all the world. We also see that universal commission of the gospel of Christ in Acts chapter number 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That's the universal commission. To be witnesses about the Lord in Jerusalem, southern Israel, Samaria, North, uh, central Israel, and then the uttermost 
parts of the earth. Folks, that would be the four corners of the earth or the four winds of the heaven. How do I know it's the four winds of the heaven? The four corners of the earth, north, south, east, west. Well, on your spare time, read Isaiah 11, 2. And Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 8. So the gospel of the kingdom in the first century involved a restrictive commission only preached to Israel, to the Jewish people. The gospel of Christ is a universal commission. Go and preach to the whole world. And these two gospels differed for an important reason. Scripture indicates that for the future millennial Davidic kingdom of God to come on earth, foretold by the Jewish prophets, it is Israel, not the Gentiles or the Samaritans, that must repent, at first anyway. It is Israel that must repent. Again, how do I know this? We just go to scripture, folks. Acts chapter number 3. Acts chapter number 3. And notice with me in verse number 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse number 19. Repent. There it is again, folks. Who is Jesus, uh, Peter talking to? The Jews. This was prior to to Gentile salvation that we find in Acts chapter 10 with the first Gentile convert to this new Jewish faith we call Christianity named Cornelius. In Acts 3.19, Peter is preaching, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The times of refreshing is referring to the blessings of the millennial kingdom to come. The kingdom that uh, John the Baptist, Jesus, and the disciples were preaching before the Lord Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Repent, therefore, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. What does he mean by that? Which before was preached unto you. That was the gospel of the kingdom that was being preached in Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. The gospel of the kingdom. Verse 21. Whom the heaven must receive. In other words, Jesus ascends back up into heaven. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9, he's been there ever since. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. What is that? Again, that's another reference to the establishment of the millennial kingdom. The messianic kingdom to come. Which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The Jewish prophets prophesied of that kingdom. Jesus spoke about that kingdom. I direct your attention to Matthew 19, verse number 28. Jesus talking to his disciples. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. That's going to be in the kingdom. Ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Jesus says, Ye which followed me in the regeneration. That word, regeneration, is the Greek word, paleogenesia, which literally means Genesis again. The partial lifting of the Adamic covenant or the curse that we're under right now. The partial lifting of it. In the millennial kingdom. Regeneration. Palig Genesia. Which literally means. Genesis. Again. So Peter is telling Israel. 
Repent. Be converted. That your sins be blotted out. Because the kingdom would have been at hand, but you rejected it. Because you rejected the Lord Jesus as Messiah. So now the kingdom is postponed for a future date. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's the future millennial kingdom. Jesus is in heaven and he must remain there until the times of the restitution of all things. There'll be a brief moment when he leaves heaven to rapture his church out of the world to bring them back into heaven. And again, remaining in heaven until the end of the tribulation period when he returns back to earth to establish that kingdom. The times of restitution of all things. Folks, again, that is why the gospel of, king, of the kingdom was preached to Israel. Israel only in the first century AD 2,000 years ago. Why? Because Israel is to be the spiritual leader of the world in the coming messianic, theocratic, Davidic kingdom to come. The kingdom spoken of by the prophets that Peter was talking about. For example, Isaiah chapter 3, verses 2 and 3, talks about that coming kingdom. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, or Israel. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion, out of Zion, shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. We also find in Zechariah chapter 8 verses 20 through 23 where it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and the inhabitants of many cities and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. Yea, Many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Can you imagine that? All the nations of the world will go to Jerusalem. They will seek out a Jew, and they will grab hold of the talit, the prayer shawl, or the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God, Hashem, is with you. Folks, after the death of the Lord, after the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus, the gospel of Jesus the Messiah involved a universal commission to preach the good news to the world. But the gospel of the kingdom involved a restrictive commission to preach exclusively to Israel. I hope you're with me, folks. In the tribulation period that follows the rapture, the gospel of the kingdom will once again be preached to Israel. Why? Because Israel failed to repent in the first century 2,000 years ago if they would have repented 
they would have received the kingdom right there by the Lord Jesus on a silver platter. But because they rejected the Lord Jesus, they failed to repent. The kingdom has been postponed for a later date. And because of their disobedience, Jerusalem was destroyed and the temple was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD and the Jews scattered to the four corners of the earth. In the future, in the tribulation period, the gospel of the kingdom will once again be preached to Israel during the second half of Daniel's 70th week of prophecy. But it will be preached to all nations as well. This time, not just exclusively to Israel. It's going to be preached to all the nations of the world in the tribulation period. In the first half of the tribulation period, God will raise up two witnesses to prophesy in Revelation chapter number 11. And because of the preaching of these two witnesses, 144,000 Jews get saved in Revelation chapter 7. And then the 144,000, they will preach to the masses during the second half of the tribulation period. God will raise up an angel who I call the evangelistic angel. And that evangelistic angel will circumnavigate the globe and will be preaching the gospel to the Gentile nations. We find this in Revelation chapter 14 and verse number 6. And I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. That will be the gospel of the kingdom. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Every Gentile nation, every person belonging to those Gentile nations, every tongue, every different dialect, and the people of those nations. Now, folks, this is what is meant by Jesus in Matthew 24 and verse number 14 about the gospel of the kingdom being preached. And again, many misinterpret this verse, especially missionaries today. And they place it in the church age now. Folks, this is not correct. How can you put Matthew 24, 14 in the church age now as being fulfilled or being fulfilled? But then in verse 15, you have the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation happens at the midway point. Of the tribulation period. So many, you know, and, and they're not meaning to do this, folks, but they misinterpret this and put Matthew 24 14 in the here and now rather than in the future in its proper perspective. Again, Matthew 24 deals with the tribulation period, Matthew 25 with the kingdom. So when Jesus says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. That gospel of the kingdom is preached in the tribulation period. And then when it's done, then the end will come. Well, the end of what? The end of the tribulation period prior to the inauguration of the millennial kingdom. Matthew 24 deals with the tribulation period, not the church age in the here and now. Matthew 25 deals with the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom is preached in the tribulation period to prepare Israel, God's elect, and the nations for the inauguration of the millennial kingdom. Folks, as we draw towards the rapture of the church, the next prophetic event on God's calendar. We right now 
preach the gospel of Christ that involved a universal commission. We preach the gospel of Jesus the Messiah now. That's a universal commission. That's being preached now in the church age. That's going to end when the rapture takes place and brings the church age to a close. The church age that began at Pentecost up until now. The rapture will end. 2,000 years of church age history. So we preach the gospel of Christ now. The universal commission. We preach the good news to win people to the Lord. After the church has been raptured, then there will be the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom that will be preached in the tribulation period, not only to Israel, but also to the entire world to bring them to faith in the Lord Jesus as Savior. Therefore, the two witnesses, the 144,000, and the evangelistic angel will be raised up during Daniel's 70th week of prophecy to do exactly that. The church will not be around, whether for the first half or the last half. She's taken up into glory at the rapture. So I conclude, folks, as the church age is drawing to an end, we must endeavor to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus now, that universal commission to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature before we are taken out at Jesus' soon coming that we call the rapture of the church. Again, folks, if you want to know more about this, then I recommend ordering from our ministry the sign of His coming. Understanding the Olivet Discourse. I did a study of the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24 some weeks back. And if you missed it, go to my YouTube page and you can listen to the audio. I'm still yet to upload verse, uh, uh, you know, um, parts one through four. But you can catch the others right there on YouTube. And I hope and pray that it will be a blessing to you. But some of you have ordered this book from us. The Sign of His Coming. Understanding the Olivet Discourse by Dr. Renald Showers. He's a, the guy's a theologian of theologians. He knows how to teach theology responsibly, especially prophecy. This book is $20, which includes shipping and handling. Go to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Go to our store. Order the book. The sign of his coming. And again, this includes the shipping and handling in the $20. It's not a big book at all. There's uh, maybe about uh, there's 124 pages. It's not a lot of pages. It's not a big book at all. But there's so much information here, folks, that will give you a better understanding of what Jesus was teaching about in the Olivet Discourse of Matthew 24. So that you can teach it responsibly. So folks, please order this book from us. The Sign of His Coming. I believe it's in our bookstore. If not, just go to the bottom of my webpage, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Hit the PayPal button. Type in the Sign of His Coming book. That's all you need to do. The Sign of His Coming book. $20. Shipping and handling is free, so just put 000 in the shipping and handling. Send it to us. We will make sure this book is on its way to you. And I know that it'll be 
a blessing to you. So we bring this broadcast to a close. And so um, 